Oh, you're, really? You're smelling really well. My goal is to take advantage of you. <gasps> that was a bad idea. So, uh, we did a little, a little experiment a few episodes ago about can we convert a whiskey noob into a whiskey lover? And it turns out Hans is a Four Roses yellow label dude. It's a bourbon guy. We sent yeah. him down the bourbon path. Yeah. Now, we're going to take it up a notch. And can we convert a whiskey hater into a whiskey lover? I, I got 20 bucks that says yes. This episode brought to you by the Wizard of Ads Partners. These are your marketing professionals with varying areas of expertise. They specialize in turning small businesses into big businesses. Go to wizardofads.com to get free articles and advice, and also check out a list of all the partners to see if there's a good fit for you. First, let's introduce Devin, our whiskey hater. Not only does Devin hate whiskey, he hates anybody that drinks whiskey. Yeah. That's not true. Uh, well, here's the thing. <laughs> Here, scoot, scoot up a little closer. There you go. There you go. The yeah. I remember uh, there was one time Daniel came into our office, the marketing yeah. office here, yeah. and he had a bottle of whiskey and he said, hey guys, you want to try this whiskey? Right. And Jacob and I were like, yeah, I'm going to try some whiskey. Yeah. But we, we didn't have any of the, these adorable glasses. So the glass is going to make the difference. It's adorable? adorable? <laughs> Just adorable. Now I'll put it this way. I'm putting whiskey hater all over the place because thumbnails and titles. In reality, He's eager to find something that he likes, but you've never actually experienced a whiskey that you thought, oh damn, that's what I like. Never. These are gonna be whiskeys that people voted on that they think are particularly good for somebody that is getting into whiskey. They're curious about it. So maybe right now you've never had a whiskey that you like, but I think it would be fair to describe you as whiskey curious. Yeah, um, especially working here. You know, yeah. yeah. Whiskey stuff. Everybody seems to enjoy it, but yeah. for me, it's like drinking diesel sometimes. It, it's okay. hard to choke down. So, you know what? Let's go down the same path we did last time. So, we had success with hands. You ready? Now, Irish whiskey. This now, is going to be your budget. This is 40%, 80 proof. This is as low as you can take the alcohol in a whiskey and still call it whiskey. It's okay, so uh, first things first, when you smell the whiskey, bring it up to your nose and just smell gently. And if it's harsh, back it off. That's too close. Okay. And your mouth opens so your air is going through your nasal passages yeah. and not burning. I don't really smell a whole lot. It just smells, um, you know, it smells like... Whiskey? Booze. Yeah. What, so when you say booze, do you mean like alcoholic? It just mm -hmm. smells like ethanol? Yeah. I mean, is there any sweetness to it at all? Yeah, maybe maybe some caramel. Okay. Know, maybe. That's right. There, that's in the most whiskey, actually. Mm -hmm. Caramel notes. Let's try it. So when you first try it for a sip, sip it about like you would drink really hot coffee and then just swallow it. Don't really do anything with it. Does it taste any different than it smells? No. No, it doesn't taste uh, different than it smells, but it, it does taste a, a, a lot different than other uh, whiskeys that I've had. Okay. okay. So what are you tasting that's totally different? It doesn't burn. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So what you're looking at is going to be, again, a relatively low proof, low percentage of alcohol. This, though, um, affordable low proof and it's very often put in cocktails. So I have a question about uh, any kind of whiskey cocktail experience or is it just mostly beer and wine that's what you're gravitating towards and you don't really get cocktails? I, I do a whiskey once a year and it's for the Kentucky Derby. Oh, I think it's wood, wood, for wood, wood for Reserve. Reserve. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and you're yeah. drinking it on the with ice or without ice? Uh, I do it with ice, um, you know, and I buy the bottle, but other than that I just use whiskey to marinate. <laughs> Chicken. That's awesome. Chicken. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's quit the monkey shoulder and go down the path that we did so we can find out if the malt mustiness and monkey shoulder is a direction that we don't want or a direction that we don't mind. Right, so we were in Ireland, now we're going to Scotland, but this is a different part of Scotland. This is going to be our much uh, friendlier, sweeter. So no smoke or anything like that. Okay. But what do you smell that wasn't in that one? Maybe some orange. Oh, oh interesting. Right. I can see that. No, absolutely. Like kind of citrus note. Yeah. It feels so like actual like fresh orange juice or more like like a orange peel like or zest. like yeah. a zest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Take a sip of that one and see what you think. See, we have so many whiskeys because my goal is to take advantage of you. What do you taste there? Again, I, you know, I think honey. Honey. Okay. I Did the really, orange show up in the taste? No. I no. I don't think so. Was there anything else, like a musty note or a round? There, there's certainly a bite. Um, you know, I, I can taste a little bit of uh, numbness mm -hmm. maybe on the, on the back part of the tongue. Does the taste rounded or pointed? It's rounded. Rounded. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was this one rounded or pointed? Um, I don't think that was either. It was either just kind of middle flat. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds about right. Okay. No. So yeah, the round malty note, improvement or not? I do like the low alcohol content because mm -hmm. one of the problems that I have is choking it down. Well, yeah, this yeah, one is 43. It's only a few more. Yeah, well, that's an interesting point about the bite. The broad strokes of whether or not something's going to be kind of burny is just looking at the proof. Mm -hmm. But we've had a tremendous number of whiskeys 
that have been like 50% plus, even in the high 50s, that even compared to um, a budget 40% whiskey, the way that a whiskey is matured and allowed to develop and those flavors kind of round off the sharp edges of the alcohol, mm -hmm. you can have a higher proof whiskey that comes across as a lot more quote unquote smooth mm -hmm. than a, a budget whiskey that hasn't had time to develop and smooth off those rough edges. Uh, would you give me the bullet rye? I want to do that one next. So this one is going to go straight to whiskey spice and it's actually a low proof as well. Um, it's not the... I, uh, I just can't anymore. I have to get a glass. It's 45%. <laughs> it's a little bit higher, but it's still low categorically. So how does it smell compared to the others? Um, I, I do smell a, uh, some spice. I don't know that I can pinpoint it. It's going to be difficult, I think, for me to pinpoint some over the alcohol, but I, there's right. definitely a spice to it. Yeah. Uh, and again, one of the points that we very, very often make is um, you should never feel pressure to point out specific notes and flavors because people go, oh, a bit of... Mmm, black currant. Yeah. And uh, maybe some uh, strawberries unripened on yeah. the vine. And that's what I get a lot, I think, from, from whiskey drinkers. Sometimes I feel like it's forced and they're faking it. Yeah. And it's just not, you know, I'm going yeah, yeah, yeah. to pull my finger across. Well, let me put yeah. that <laughs> You know, I'm not really into the, the um, oh, right here, right there. The, you know, a, a lot of times when I when I taste this, right. stuff, I feel like if my car were empty on gasoline, I could pour this in the tank and trick my gas tank into <laughs> thinking that this is gasoline for at least five miles. Usually what uh, most people need to do is to have a direct A, B comparison. Flying blind on a single whiskey is one of the hardest things you can do. Uh, Having it to compare to something makes everything a lot more simple. I taste this one. This is the rye that you were smelling where you thought, yeah, I could see that that's a little bit spicy. Um, you might historically get some things like like eucalyptus tree. You ever been around eucalyptus trees like in California? Yeah. Or you get some like black tea notes, like sweet black tea or things like that. So try a sip of that one. Maybe licorice, maybe uh, cinnamon. Yeah, I can definitely taste some cinnamon. I think that that's what I'm smelling. Yeah. Yeah. You so, got, you got buzz right improved now. or not improved? You're gonna, make, you're gonna make me get it, aren't you? You're gonna make me reach over and make, no, there's some more, right? Ah, no, no. <laughs> Are there specific things in these that I should yeah. recognize? Not should, no. Well, it, there's it, no such thing as should, but there are specific things you absolutely could recognize, right. and they would be pinpointed down to the type of grain that's being used or how it's being distilled or and things like that, right? How it's being aged. Yeah, and, and to, to finish the point, if you're not finding stuff, and the people that are around you, they, they're very experienced, they're enthusiastic about whiskey, they're pulling out all these flavors. Right. It's not because you're not equipped to taste them, it's they have this breadth of reference points and experiences where yeah. they've been able to do A, B comparisons, they've been able to try, you know, 50 different whiskeys in a single category. Mo like, the, more often than not, people aren't faking it, because eh, that's kind of a dumb way to spend your time. Weird things will happen, like if you'll name a note, and uh, it's like, oh, I'm getting a little bit of a graham cracker. <gasps> the power of suggestion makes you taste graham cracker. Sure, yeah. But you can't taste it if it's not there. Right. Yeah. You're looking at these things without a historical background of pattern recognition, so there's, you're not gonna find things that you don't have a recall to know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, it's, uh, that was the, uh, that's not for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's how we felt about rye. Like, but, nope, no honest, thanks. And honestly, with as many whiskeys as, as we've had, it took us like two years to start to Before we started finding ryes that we just right out of the gate enjoyed as is. This is probably our least favorite category for a long time. Okay, now I want you to imagine that it's Derby Day. This is a bourbon, this is Buffalo Trace. And how is that different than anything that you've tried? Up till now? And feel free to grab the others from before. I'm not gonna look at you, I will listen though. Me too. Oh, you're, really? You're good. smelling really well. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, uh, this it might is be- that, a, Is this... that Pantene? <laughs> <laughs> this might be a little bit of a uh, little grassy. Oh, okay, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Cut grass or green grass? Hey. Hey. Oh, hey. Yeah, dry yeah. and dusty. That's, that's corn. Yeah. So that's, that's often actually... what happens. People will describe bourbons as having this corn dust, like like a grass dusty note. Is there a sweetness at all? No, not, I, don't, I don't really taste the sweetness. Mm. Does it taste kind of like a woody or peppery or bitey that, in a way that's not alcohol? At the end. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be yeah. that new oak barrel most likely. But the wood, uh, if presented in high quality, starts to taste woody. But if the wood appears in low quantities, it has a similar impact in your palate to what feels like pepper. It's kind of bitey without being woody. Yeah, I get that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's where you get the bitiness. Yeah. Uh, of these four, still going with the easy to drink, or were you converted into bourbon uh, I think or the malt? Thus far, I think. Um, the monkey shoulder. Yeah. Let's do ice comparisons with yeah. monkey shoulder and four roses single barrel. You used to be a bouncer? 
No, uh uh, no, no, no bouncing. For no you. bouncing for you? No, no. What no. am I thinking of? I'm not sure. You Do had... I look like I was a bouncer? I don't know, man. No, no, no. <laughs> no bouncing. <laughs> what? You, what was your job before this? Before what? Media buying? Yeah. Uh, I was in the Navy. I was a... Oh, that's what it was. Navy. You yeah. Got, you got a bouncer from Navy. I did. Yeah, that's it. They, they yeah. feel like bouncing, like bouncing lads. So I'm using these because I want the water impact to be low but I want the temperature impact to be high. Okay. So they're larger ice cubes so they won't melt as quickly and will have a bit different impact. Mm -hmm. Do you know Rex thought I was a bouncer? So who's in the Navy? Yeah. yeah. That's the same thing. Yeah. Bouncer. See? I see. They're like the bouncers <laughs> of the military. Yeah, copy that. What is the whole joke about the thing about the Coast Guard? Yeah, yeah. you have to be six feet or taller in case the boat's <laughs> same. You just stand right up. Coast Guard. So, yeah. This is monkey shoulder. So this is the one that you liked that was a little bit malty, yeah. but now it's on the rocks. Let's see if that brings down the bite that you were struggling with. Oh yeah, 100%. Do you like it? Like, yeah. would you drink it like that and think like, yeah, it's good? Or is it like, eh, it's just an improvement, but still not my thing? Um, no, I, I think I would drink this, not alone, but uh, um, you know, if I, you know. Alone in the dark? You need some no, help? No, if I would, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would, yeah, I think I would drink this. All right, now let's see about if the bourbon does the same thing. All right. In my experience, bourbon can stand up to ice and still taste remarkably bourbon and not watered down whiskey. Yeah, it still has the bite, yeah. Still has the Do bite. Do you so, like that or not like that? Uh, well, you know, being a beginner uh, whiskey drinker, mm -hmm. I don't think I would want the bite as much. Okay. Yeah. Well then, I'm also interested in, what if we watered it down until it stopped being bitey? So let's take the one, the bourbon that was bitey, that you kind of liked. Yeah. So I'm gonna water it down for you until it stops. The moment that you think, okay, no longer any bite to that at all. Yeah, there's not a lot of bite to that. Is okay. it gone completely? Yeah, pretty much. Let's try a little Kulila 12. Yeah, this isn't necessarily uh, banana hammock aggressive. This is the smoky uh, portion <laughs> that is found in most Johnny Walkers. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can smell that smoke. Right? Yeah. yeah. Take a sip of that one and see if, if it's any even possible to be palatable. Yeah, I really do like that. Wait, wait really? Hold on. <laughs> I just just tuck in right here. <laughs> just oh, 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 that's, hug it out, that's hug it stuff. out. No, we were tap dancing. I just wanted to. We bump. were. I don't. Yeah, yeah. We were like messing with the water and the ice and the low proof and the whatever. You you get in here with a little bit of a smoky some bitch. Yeah, a little smoky some bitch. Why? Well, I'll tell you, I'm I, curious. I think it's because. Uh, <laughs> I think it's because I like to barbecue, and a lot of times when I barbecue, ah. I do smoke. Okay. Like I like my ribs, smoke yeah, yeah, my yeah. chicken. Would you drink that neat, he's, just like it is? I wouldn't have too many of them, but yeah. He's, he's referencing one of the biggest, biggest uh, factors that goes into enjoying any kind of food, any kind of drink. Pattern recall. It's, it's pattern recall, and specifically, yes. it's uh, familiarity, it's nostalgia, it's mm -hmm. associative memories. Things that take you back to a time and place where it was enjoyable for you. This is taking you back to barbecue. Yeah. Right? It's bringing Most you home. Most people get their ass tossed around the room whenever they're dealing with the eyeless scotches. Yeah. Ha! That's pretty great. This whiskey was voted on in 2019, the March Madness bracket we did damn near a year ago, as the go to greatest whiskey in the history of. 2019 basically means it's the most popular amongst, amongst the tribe. And uh, same category, a little bit higher proof if I remember correctly. Yeah, a little darker notes yeah. than this one, not as bright and shiny, but yeah. still smoky. But the reason why we're pouring, in, uh, pouring you this is because the category that you seem to enjoy of all the whiskeys in that category, this is what people love the most. Well, I'm not just blowing smoke. This is definitely my, my favorite. Yeah? Oh! Better than the Kalila? Better than that, but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But I like that very much. Okay. 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 So he's the logging with 16 yeah. guys. This is cast strength bourbon. You say uh, the alcohol burn mm -hmm. is something that you're not a big fan of. Mm. Yeah, well, welcome to it, my friend. 117 proof. You ready? Kind of. Okay. That was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to fit you for an official Whiskey Trap smoking jacket, um, pipe. Definitely and a pipe. Monocle? Uh, maybe a monocle. You're not top hat level yet. Nope. That. Getting there. Are these real things? Yes. No, we should do that. So no. I'll get it to top hat. People think we're hipsters anyway, it's fine. Might as well. You guys are 100% hipsters. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what? How are we hipsters? <laughs> Whatever, Navy. Yeah, you're hipsters, yeah. God damn it. I don't no, want to. No, it's cool, I mean. No, it's no, not cool. It's not true. How are we? How are we a hipster? Go ahead. Oh, um. 
Well, the the electric scooter. Ooh! Uh, no, I, no, I you love do it. not bad mouth the machine. No, I, I no, I love the electric scooter, but I mean it's kind of a hipster kind of deal. This isn't a dig. I feel like this, <laughs> is, this, this is a compliment. Freaking Devin! How am I a hipster? I mean, well, the beard. The beard is the yeah. hipster. The beard's yeah. pretty hipster. How is yeah. the? No, I you mean, have a beard, but it's unkempt. You guys, you guys act like these are insults. These are these are great things. I can't grow a beard. So you wish you were a hipster. Well, I, I don't know that I wish. I, oh. I, <laughs> now we see how you really feel. No, no, no I, I I admire hipsters. I don't know that I would want to be one though. Daniel, you guys are great. Are we hipsters? You got, this, you got the earring. You got the tattoos. You know. I don't have any tattoos. Oh, no, no, Jesus. I don't want to be a hipster. I'm not. You're the hipster. No, you are. He said it to you first. It was all about the machine. Did you look at me? When you said hipster, like, were you more aimed at Daniel or me? Damn it.